Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 money and career reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. Now, before we dive into this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, relaxed, and at peace as you enter into this safe, loving space. All right. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Gemini, September 2020, money and career. Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Now let's see what your chakra energy is. Gemini, September 2020, money and career. Gemini, September 2020, money and career, Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right, these three. So we have here play, which is the heart chakra. And this is saying that during this time, there will be you will have a desire just to keep on wish working, just to keep on pushing, just to keep on moving forward. Don't forget to let play, to let joy, to let laughter into your life because that is going to be so absolutely prosperous for you. It really is. It's going to brighten things. It's going to let you connect with what you truly love and what you truly want instead of feeling like it's all just being taken over by everything else, by work and by demands of other people. Letting yourself embrace joy, letting yourself let in play into your life is going to be very, very beautiful. It moves you to holistic health. Now this is the root chakra and this is you finding a more natural approach to things. It can be that you've had an upset stomach or a headache or, you know, things like this. And instead of, you know, of course, talk to your healthcare professional, but instead of, you know, going the more traditional, like pop this pill and everything will be solved you start changing your diet, you start, you know, meditating more, you start, you know, using herbs and really connecting with you. And that is going to lead you to a place of, of grounding. That is going to lead you to a place of prosperity and abundance. And this is going to be a way where you're much more in tune with your body and much more in tune with what you want and what you need than, than you ever had been before. And that's going to be really beautiful for you. It's going to be very healing, very freeing. And it leads you to inner strength, which is the solar plexus chakra. And it leads you to a breaking of the shell. It's like you are coming out of the shell that held you back, out 
out of the doubts and the fears and the apprehensions. And you are really embracing you. You're really embracing what you want. So Gemini, you have been through, you have been through the ringer for a lot of you Geminis. And this is a time where you kind of put up protective honor, armor, you know, as we all do. You've put up protective armor and you thought, oh man, you know, I'm just going to have to live behind this armor and I'm not going to really get to, to have the life that I want or the joy that I want. And this is like, no, absolutely not. You're actually seeing that armor shattering. It's not that you're not protecting yourself anymore. It's that you get to live f fully and freely as you and have prosperity and abundance come forward. And there's a beauty to you that you are embracing that once seemed frozen in ice. The left-hand side here, this is your inner self. The middle is your emotional self, your heart self. The right-hand side is your, your public self. So let's see. We start with the Ace of Air. This is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift just for you. And you are an air sign energy. You're represented by the swords in the minor arcana, by the lovers in the major arcana. So this is beautiful. And then we have the messenger of air, the knight of air in the Rider Waite Smith deck. And this is you taking that gift of of knowledge, of understanding, and absolutely utilizing it. It leads you to the two of earth. Again, yeah, this is exactly what play was showing. You're balancing so much that you're forgetting to balance yourself, to let your your joy and your prosperity come in. Then you have the messenger of earth, the knight of earth, earth sign energy, pentacles, of course. This is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You're taking a lot in about the prosperity that you want, about the way that you want and need to move forward in your life. So there are, are new ideas coming your way. With your heart, you're crowned with the Eight of Fire. Things are moving fast, faster than you anticipated. So that is really quite lovely. You have the King of Fire, which is a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Your heart, you know, is flaming the way. You are looking at the reason why you get out of bed in the morning. You are looking at what you desire and what you want from your life. And you are really the king. It's the messages Okay, knowledge from divinity coming forward, inspiring you. You have the queen of water here, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, right? The most loving, caring, compassionate of all the queens. And then you have the five of air, the five of swords. You are moving past something that is astoundingly karmic, right? And it has been holding you back for, for quite some time. This can also be a, a scar that you inherited through your DNA line, but this is what has made you doubt you? What has made you stay small, stay quiet? You have here temptation, right? Which is the the, the devil card in the Rider Waite Smith deck. This is a Capricorn energy, a time frame December twenty second to January nineteenth. Okay. Then we have the messenger of water. The seven of fire. Choose your battles wisely. And the two of air, there is a choice to be made. And the options that you had seen as your only options, they're starting to expand. And that's going to be really quite good for you because you're seeing your world expanding in a way that you hadn't anticipated. And with money and with career, this is a very good sign. So let's see the people who will aid you during this time. Who are the people who will aid Gemini? September 2020, money and career. Who are the people who will aid Gemini? September 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh, goodness. Okay, so <laughs> these three just literally fell out. So that is super cool. And remember, you don't have to know these people in real life. They can be people who aid you along the way through the inspiration that they give, through, you know, any form of media or any way that you come across their knowledge. So we have the Prince of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. You have the Prince of Cups right here with the Messenger of Water in the Good Tarot is the Prince, the Knights here. So there is something that, that you are gaining an understanding of, yeah, that you are gaining your, your understanding of. And it starts off as very small is what I'm seeing. And as it starts off small, it gains. Because he's sitting here, he's looking at the cup and he's holding it up and it's like, okay, how do I move forward? And there's a little bit of a disinterest here. So there's this person here connecting with their emotional self, with what they desire, but they're not really going to know that they're, they're connecting with a deeper truth or a deeper passion, a deep, deeper power. 
And so here, this person also moves forward very slowly. The Knight of, of Cups is, is the second slowest moving knight. So this isn't a person in a rush for anything, right? But they are connecting with their hearts, their souls, and themselves in a way that is quite unique, quite beautiful, but also a little bit disinterested. So it's an interesting combination right there. Then we have the Knight of Swords, the Prince of Swords in the Druid Craft Tarot. And the Prince of Swords, of course, is your energy, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, right? This is somebody who's saying, act and go for it. So your emotions are saying, take time, look at things, you know, in the emotional inspiration that you are getting is saying, take times, look at, take time, look at things. And then the inspiration that really speaks to your inner self is like, act now, strike while the iron is hot. Don't let opportunities slip through your fingertips. And that's going to be something that you kind of war with a bit because you're going to try and want to do everything. Gemini during this time and you're going to suffer from like doubts and fears that you're just not going to get enough done you're not going to be able to move forward you know well enough fast enough and so here this is somebody who kind of puts the puzzle pieces together or this is information that starts to put the puzzle pieces together of everything that you desire but also everything that has overwhelmed you and you start moving forward in dedication and determination and it leads you to the strength card this is a Leo energy July 23rd to August 22nd. And this is a person who leads through example. This is a person whose greatest strength is their kindness, is their compassion. And this is a person who really speaks to you because a lot of people will sit there and kind of negate what they do because they think that brute, brute force strength or this, you know, I can see it strength is, is what strength is all about. And sometimes it is the quietest people. It is the the humblest people who have the greatest strength. And this is going to be something that you are astoundingly drawn to during this time. A person who is quietly strong, who is kindly compassionate and brilliant and, and, and powerful. And this is somebody who really speaks to you. Now it moves you to accepting the gifts of the Ace of Air. The Ace of Air, Air Sign Energy, is moving you forward. It's knowledge, it's are coming through doubts and fears and apprehensions. Oh, that's interesting. And it's looking at things. It's kind of like as a rose blooming. It's looking at things and it's like, oh my gosh, that's the answer. That's what I desired. That's what I wanted. That's what I needed. And you're going to be rather surprised about the whole thing. And there is a sense at times of questioning. But this is, again, God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, saying there are answers. There is wisdom. There is power. Connect with me. Connect with me and let me show you. Let me guide you. This is a tremendous time for you because you have the messenger of air, which is, of course, the prince of air right here in the druid craft. So you're definitely taking this gift and you're defending what is absolutely important to you. But you're also seeing a new avenue open up, a new way of being start to unfold and develop. And you're connecting with it and you're connecting with you. You're connecting with where you want to be, where you need to be. You're connecting with the way that you want to move forward. And you're always going to, during this time, want to move forward more quickly and more powerfully than, than you can. All right? So that can be something that's rather frustrating, where you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I'm just not accomplishing enough. I'm not moving quick enough. But you are. It's just that you have tremendous expectations. And you'll, you'll underestimate the time that things take. And yes, you can kind of half-ass things, right? And they can take less time. But during this time, you are really going to sit there and say, it's the quality, not the quantity that matters. And for you, the quality sings to your heart and embraces your soul. It is the quality of the knowledge that you are gathering. It is the quality of the work that you are producing. It is the quality that means everything to you. And now in certain circumstances, you're not going to be able to put in the time and the effort that you would want to. Either things have to be done right away or other people are involved and they're not really interested in what you're interested in. This is saying here, it's the attention to details that you really need to be embracing during this time. The way that you are seeing things, the way that you are connecting things, pulling things together. It's going to be very beautiful for you. And it's going to be one of the gifts that you need to kind of yeah, you need to embrace within yourself. So here 
it's like, it's doing something. It can be the way that you unwind from a long day. It can be doing something that takes time, takes effort, takes craftsmanship. And that's really going to start recharging your battery. It's not saying it has to be perfect, but it is saying that I need to take my time on things and I need to create something that is beautiful to me, even if other people looked at it and didn't understand. That's going to be something that really aids you during this time. Also the knowledge, the understanding, and the fighting for what you believe in. The sitting there and saying, this is my passion, this is my power, this is my truth, because your heart and your mind are coming together and they are embracing your passion. They're embracing the way that you want to move forward. You're going to bite off more than you can chew. And that's something you have to be very, very mindful of, Gemini. You are going to bite off more than you can chew. You're going to sit there and say to people, oh, don't worry, I can do this. I can do it. I can do it. And just put more and more upon your plate than you could actually do. And then, you know, that's why people say, oh, Geminis, they're flighty. You know, and I myself am a Gemini. We're not, well, sometimes we are flighty, but we're not flighty. We are, we just know when to walk away. And we know when something doesn't feel right. And we're not going to sit there and say, oh, but, you know, maybe it'll, feel better and it'll feel better later on. It's like, no, my soul is screaming. I, I can't do this anymore and I have to let it go. And here with the two of pentacles, you're juggling and you're juggling things that you love. You're juggling things that are of the utmost importance to you, but you're not looking at yourself. You're not looking at what you need. You're not looking at what you desire. You're not looking at how you need to move forward and manifest your life. And so when you're juggling everything, the one thing that isn't in balance is you. And that is going to be where kind of the house of cards tumbles over. You need to balance yourself. You need to have that balance, that harmony, that, that understanding to you. Because during this time, I mean, you have three of the four nights. The only night that you, you are missing is the night of pentacles. So you are defending your mind. Oh, not the night of pentacles, the night of, of wands. You're defending your mind. You're defending your prosperity. You're defending your emotions. And so this can be a time where you feel like I can't drop anything because I need to be on my game. And here, Spirit is saying, let things develop a little bit more freely. Don't think that you have to hold on so tightly or that everything has to be done so quickly because you have the fastest moving night and the slowest moving night together here. The messenger of Earth, the night of Earth, is is the slowest moving, is the slowest moving night. And so it is that the seeds that are being planted and that you are planting they really move forward in prosperity because they have time to mature. They have time to develop. They have time to become. And so here with your mind and the way that you, you want things to be, the way that you're cutting through doubts and fears, kind of like there's a franticness to you at times that's saying, if not now, then never. If not now, then never. And, you know, I can't believe I wasted this time. I can't believe I waited so long. You know, what the heck is wrong with me? You have to ground yourself with not in my time, but divine time. And I know that sounds so annoying. It really is annoying. You know, especially for us Geminis, we like to get things done quickly. We like to have, you know, we like to be on to the next advent adventure, the next deeper riddle, the, less, the next deeper meaning. And so here, as you are moving forward, it's saying take time to plant the seeds. Take time to really develop what is absolutely powerful and bountiful for you. Because as you do so, you are laying down a profound foundation that you are going to be able to defend and uphold throughout your whole life. And as you see this within your heart, you're going to see things are moving faster than you had anticipated, which is interesting because in your inner self, it's saying, you know, slow down, look at things, take these gifts, balance yourself, you know, defend your prosperity. But in your heart, you are going to find that things are coming at you. And it can be that you didn't really want them to come at you. You know, you're sitting there and thinking, oh, well, this is an adventure I never wanted to be on. But it's not going to stop it from coming. This is life. And so as things are moving forward and as things are changing, developing, and becoming so much more than before anticipated, you are going to see that you are looking at things more truthfully and more honestly with yourself. It's kind of like, I can handle this. I don't want to handle that. I, I can handle this. I can't handle that. 
And you're going to have to be open with yourself with the changes because that's going to be how you come out of the shell with the inner strength and the solar plexus chakra where you come out of the shell and you say, this is where I stand and this is what I stand for. This is what I love. This is the direction that I need to move in. And this is not, you know, this is not a game played for other people. This is my truth, my power, my legacy on this earth. And so you're seeing yourself moving in a direction you hadn't anticipated and doing so with, with gusto. And it's interesting here because the eight of fire, the eight of wands moves quickly and she's riding here a panda and pandas move very, very slow. So it can almost feel as if everything is changing around you and yet you're moving slowly because you're moving truthfully in your essence and in what you desire. And that is going to be the root of your truth during this time. It's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, Spirit is saying hurry up and wait, but it's not necessarily hurry up and wait. It is that things are moving, you are changing with it, but you're actually stepping back to who you, who you are, who you need to be, who you want to be, and you're finding a part of you that was lost. And that part of you that was lost could have been lost for an astoundingly long time. And now that you connect, you're connecting with the King of Fire. And the King of Fire, the King of Wands, is a fire sign energy in Aries, a Leo, a Sagittarius. This is a person who dedicates themselves to what they want from their lives. This is a person who isn't afraid to roll up their sleeves. And this is a king who, as all kings can feel, can feel stuck, can feel overwhelmed, can feel as if they're not moving in the right direction, right? As if they're not moving forward, yet you are. You are going to have that bit of a war with yourself. I'm not moving forward, and yet you're going to see that things are changing. They're not changing fast enough, but they are changing in the way that they need to be. And so there is this bit of, of doubt and fear around you, a bit of, of chaos. But as you hold on to your dreams, and your dreams are right at the heart of you, you are going to find, and this isn't necessarily your dreams. This is, well, it is isn't, and it isn't, okay? So this is the passion that becomes your reality. This is your reason for getting out of bed in the morning. This is what sets your heart on fire. This is what you want from your life. And you are connecting with that and the heart of you is really showing. So you're connecting with your heart and your truth in your emotional self. And you're saying, what do I need to thrive? Not just, to, not just survive, but thrive. And as you connect with that thriving understanding, you then have the queen of waters coming forward. And you might sit there and say, okay, well, water can be evaporated by fire and fire can put out water. So these are going to cancel each other out. But no, no, they're not. Because what Spirit just showed me here is a beautiful cup of steaming tea. And tea is my favorite food in the whole entire world. If it's not food, you're not drinking enough, right? So here with the queen of water, you have kindness and compassion and love and understanding coming forward. It's the heart. Okay, the queen of water, the queen of cups, is the most compassionate and the kindest of all the queens. All right, the king of fire is this fiery determination, is this person who is looking at the passion of the world. And yet the queen of water is looking at the compassion of the world. So you have your passion and your compassion coming forward. You're seeing yourself in a very different way. And you're seeing the way that these two can intertwine in a very sensual, very, you know, powerful, beautiful dance that lets you be who you are and lets you move in a direction and in a way that you yourself might have given up on, but your heart has never stopped remembering. Yeah, it's just, you know the song from, from Disney, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes It. I think that's Cinderella, right? And you're going to find that here. You're going to find yourself connecting with the wish your heart has made, and it becomes part of a living dream. And then you have the five of air. It's karmic why, you, why it's taken so long. It is. And you're going to sit there, and you might laugh at that, and you might doubt it, but it is karmic why it has taken so long. Why, you know finding your voice and standing in your truth and moving forward, you know, slowly and steadily embracing your abundance has taken so much time. And it is because you didn't want to be mean before. You didn't want to, to hurt anybody's feelings or go against or have people think badly of you. And so here with the five of swords, this is a standing up for yourself. 
this is a knowing your truth and what you desire and where it is that you want to be. And I do know people sit there and say, okay, the five of swords is bad sportsmanship. You should give the person back their swords and you should let them, you know, be on their merry way. But here's the thing. In medieval times, oh my gosh, in medieval times, we cannot even fully comprehend how to think like a medieval person because they might still be people, but they are so different than who we are today. In medieval times, if you did not take your enemy's sword and you did not take their life, you were considered weak. You were. So the fact that you let the person walk away with their lives, and I'm not saying this in a way of like brutality now. I'm saying it very metaphorically. The fact that you let the person walk away with their dignity and their self-respect and, and you yourself move forward, that is considered astoundingly merciful. But you took the sword. You took the craftsmanship. You took the knowledge, the wisdom, the, the wealth of that encounter. Because have you ever noticed that you, you repeat things in your life, okay? It can be that, yeah, that there are certain themes in your existence that repeat. And so let's say you have low self-esteem. It can be that this theme repeats in every, <clears throat> excuse me, every single avenue of your existence. It shows in the work that you choose or in the the bosses that you have, like, you know, they, they can boss you around or treat you badly, right? It then shows in the relationships because the person can boss you around, treat you badly. You, you don't feel like you're worth more. And so many of us feel this way. So many of us have this hurdle to overcome. And yet we don't see it as, as, as something that will affect every avenue of our existence. And I'm just using this as a very personal and also very profound one because it seeps into everything, this doubt, this fear. And so you don't have the job that you want. You don't have the person that you want. You, you feel like you're floundering in this world. And the five of swords is saying, now it's time to stand up for yourself. Because when you stand up for yourself, when you see the pattern, and your pattern can be different, but when you see the pattern repeating and repeating and repeating, and you're not breaking it, you're not sitting there and saying, no, I'm taking this wisdom from it, taking this knowledge, then it's going to repeat because the lesson hasn't been learned. And so here, it is learning the lesson. It is seeing the pattern. It is knowing your truth. It is sitting there and saying, I am worth more. And it's not letting people take advantage of you. And that's at your heart. Your heart is, you want your dream to become a reality. You are working so hard towards it and things are speeding up for you. But if you don't stop the cycles, then you don't get there. And not there is not where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be there. You're supposed to be moving forward towards what you desire, what you want, and what you wish for. And it leads you here in the public arena. It leads you to temptation. The temptation is the devil card, okay? And the devil is our addictions. It is our doubts and our fears and the things that make us think, oh, I can't do that. I want it more than life itself, but I can't. And you're going to find that you're breaking the chains that have bound you. You're breaking the doubts, the fears, the apprehensions, the questioning, the, the heartbreak, the pain, the disappointment. And you're saying, this isn't my world. And the devil wants it to be your world. This world wants it to be your world. Okay? The people who sell things and say, oh, if you buy this for the low, low price of like, you know, $19.99, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. You'll be happy. People sell dreams of happiness that aren't achieved because in our hearts and in our souls, we might not think we deserve happiness. And you might be sitting there and saying, Dane, I deserve happiness. I know I deserve happiness. There's a monster that has to be faced. There is something here that has like lassoed you and held you in place and you're fighting against those ropes. But the one thing it doesn't expect you to do is stop fighting. So the ropes themselves slacken and you can walk free. It is looking at things and saying, you know what? Sometimes force cannot be stopped by force. It just can't be. It's like two trucks driving at each other, right? And they meet and they're just pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Changing the path, changing the way that you're looking at things leads you to a wealth of the heart, a wealth of the self. In the public arena, 
you will have a tendency to fall back into past patterns, okay? And this is something that you are moving away from. It comes because of, because of the Knight of Cups, because this little bit of information comes here. Something very soft, very beautiful is whispered in your ears. And it's your passion, it's your heart and your mind coming together. It is your desire for this earth. And your wings start to open. You start to open. And it's like, I can be this change. I can have this love and this joy. And addictions aren't just drugs and alcohol and, and gambling. You know, they're the addictions of self-doubt, of anxiety and of fear, and of letting everybody else's voice matter above your own or putting all the weight upon your shoulders and saying, I just have to carry it. For the rest of my life, I just have to carry it. It could be not giving yourself a voice as if your lips are taped shut and it's like no more. I claim my power. I claim my truth. And I move forward in it on this earthly plane because I believe the devil rules the earthly plane. Yeah. And not to get religious on people, but when Jesus went out into the desert, you know, and the devil came to him and said, all this can be yours. Because he owns it, right? You can have riches and fame and fortune here. The only thing you have to do is give up everything that you are. And Jesus walked away from that. He was like, no thanks, not a good deal. And we're tempted time and time again. It's like you can have it. The only thing you have to do is compromise you. And if you stumbled across this channel, you have found a way to stay very true to yourself or finding a way to go back to that truth. And as you're moving forward in your career, in what you want on this earthly plane, in what you desire in your life, you're not selling yourself short anymore and you're not buying into the nonsense that everybody else is selling you. It's like, I know my truth. I know my power. I know my prosperity. And even if it's just hazy, even if it's just a, a shaded outline of things, there's a knowing, there's a gift to you that you're connecting with and it starts to come to you and it speaks to your heart in the gentlest, kindest way and then it grows. During this time, there are going to be battles that you are fighting with the seven of fire, the seven of wands. Choose, choose your battles wisely. You know, because you're going to sit there and think, okay, I just need to get everybody to understand. You know, I just need to get everybody to be on the same page as me. And here's the thing. Some people aren't even reading the same book as you. And so they oppose you because they can't understand you. You're not even, you're not just a different book. You're a different book written in a completely different language that they never heard of before. And so here with the seven of fire, this isn't being a doormat. This is knowing when to choose your battles and choosing them wisely. And as you do so, you choose your passion, you choose your power. You choose who you give your power to and how you take your power and embrace yourself. And as you move forward, you have the two of air. You're going to see that as you're more discerning with how you spend your energy, who you trust and who, who you listen to, the two of air comes forward and the pathways that you were looking at. You could either go this way or this way and you weren't too keen on either one of them. But they were logical and they were sensible and sometimes you have to be logical and sensical, right? Sensible, right? You're going to see a third path, a fourth path, a fifth path start to open up. These are going to be more you. They might be logical and they might be sensible and they might not be. But they are powerful and they are truthful. And they call to your soul more than the pathway laid out by others that others have walked and it moves you it crowns you in your song and it moves you towards your truth it gives you wings and Gemini that's what you want you want wings to fly to fly and to soar above to be free and that's what you're gaining here a freedom a beauty a balance the repeat of the number two it shows that you are collaborating and creating, cultivating and deciding. 
the repeat of the nights shows that you are fighting, defending. There's a freedom of movement to your heart. There's a dedication of soul to your, to your spirit, to your fire, to your passion that you are looking at here. Let's go deeper. Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. September 2020, money and career, Gemini. Show me more deeply, show me more deeply. Show me deeply, show me deeply, show me deeply. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides guide this message. Show me deeply and guide this message. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me deeply. Guide this message and show me deeply. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. And let's look at the people you are to be mindful of during this time. Who are the people Gemini is to be mindful of? September 2020, money and career. Who are the people Gemini is to be mindful of? September 2020, money and career. Who are the people Gemini is to be mindful of? September 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Three. Three is a good number for you during this time. You have three chakra cards, three people who will aid, three people to be mindful of. So three is a very good number for you. We have the Queen of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is, this is a person who is in the middle of things, but they stoke the fire. They build the fire instead of, you know, sitting there and calming things down and connecting people. They, they kind of like to cause trouble and mayhem. They're, that's just going to be their thing. They like to spread gossip and like to kind of get a rise out of people. And then we have justice, which is a Libra energy, a time frame of September 23rd to October 22nd. This is somebody who is, it's odd to say too concerned with justice. All right. So by this, I mean, spirit is showing somebody who is like the letter of the law. Everything is done exactly, you know, there is no compassion to it. And this is a person who's really going to get you mad because there is no compassion here. There is no understanding. It's like, well, those are the rules. And you're going to sit there and look at them and be like, those are stupid rules. And they're not going to think so. They're like, well, no. Yet they're also too concerned with everything being super fair. So it's kind of like, even if you worked harder, they're like, no, everything has to be fair. And you're sitting there and you're looking at them and they're, you're like, that person did nothing. And you're treating them exactly the same when I've carried everything on my shoulders. And the answer is going to be yes. Yes. And then we have here temperance. This is a Sagittarius energy, November 22nd to December 21st. This is somebody, this is somebody that you kind of want to get to know what they're doing more, but they kind of close the door on you. And by kind of, I mean, they close the door on you. They, they are too interested in how they're connecting and what they're working at and how they're moving things along to really connect with you. And so this is a person you have to be mindful of because you're going to be really drawn to them. All right. But you're also going to be be shut out by them. And you're going to think, oh, it's something I did. And it's, it's not. It's, it's them. It's them, it's not you. We have temperance here. So you have a Sagittarius to be mindful of, temperance to be mindful of, but you also have a really good temperance right there. You have the Knight of Emotions, okay? The Knight of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. And then you have the Chariot right here, which is Cancer Energy. 
You have the nine of inspiration, the nine of wands. You are being inspired and moving forward in that inspiration. Yeah, job well done. You have the queen of inspiration, the queen of wands, fireside energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The ten of inspiration, all about inspiration. I love how you have the king of inspiration, the king of wands here. Now you have the queen, you know, layered on top of him. So there is something here about like this majestic power coming forward. And with the ten of inspiration, you're seeing that you put too many burdens on yourself. I like how it goes from nine to ten here, that progression. And now you're kind of, you're divvying up the load. It doesn't all have to be carried just by you. And then we have the moon, which is Pisces energy, February 19th to March 20th. You have the hanged man. You see things differently than everybody else. And you have the seven of inspiration. You have the seven of wands. So you have the seven of wands here. You have the seven of wands here in the same arena. It's like choose your battles wisely in the public arena. Okay. It's going to make all the difference in the world. Temperance, balance. The balance of what you desire, the balance of where you want to be, the balance of the waters that are, in, that are inspiring you, that are nourishing you, that are moving you forward. You're calling upon balance. And as you call upon balance, you call upon... Okay, so you and Sagittarius are sister signs. Okay, You go together really well. Right? And you, you balance each other out. And so here, there is a sense of your, your gregariousness. Now, Sagittarius energy is also very gregarious, but they are much more personal when they search for knowledge. And so this is a personal quest for knowledge and understanding, which then you will share in your Gemini way. way. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, you have to hear this. Yeah, and that's going to be something about you. Like you gather it all and you're going to be very kind of more quiet, more introspective as you take it all in. And then as you have it, once you have it, once you've, you know, connected with it more, then you bring it, bring it forward. And as you bring it forward, you, you move as the Knight of Cups. You move in your heart's truth, in what your heart desires. And this really starts to open up doors for you. This really starts to have people see your authenticity and your truth and your passion. And as you do so, it connects you, yes, with chariot energy, with cancer energy, which is a time frame of June 21st to July 22nd. But it also connects you with the fact that you are a heck of a lot more powerful than you give yourself credit for, Gemini. You are connecting with the passion of what you want, where you need to move forward. You're looking at things and nobody, nobody can move your heart. It's like your, your love is strong and true and pure and that is what you are embracing here. And it doesn't mean that it has to be a love for another person because this could be a hard way to love. You know, if somebody is really giving you a hard time because you are here with cancer energy, you are so absolutely dedicated. And it is here telling you, see the truth of what you want and what you love from life. Move forward in that truth, but also take the risk on you. Okay, take the risk on what you love and what you're creating and what you desire from your life and yourself. It leads you to the nine of, of wands, nine of inspiration, where you've been through the wall. You have. You've been through the war. You've been through the ringer. You've had doubts. You've had fears. You've felt overwhelmed. You've felt as if your voice didn't matter. You've had the world kind of shouting at you and everybody telling you how you should be handling things. You've won. You do not have to listen to everybody else. It is time to listen to you. It's time to move forward, empowered and emboldened by you. This is not seeing yourself as a victor. Not a victor. This is not seeing yourself as a victim, but a victor. And spirit just keeps on saying, victor, victor, victor. So you are victorious. You are victorious. You are victorious. You are the one who gets to move forward. And you have to stay true to yourself. You're going to try and take on the words of everybody else and everything else. But what you're seeing here with the queen of inspiration is you're seeing your truth. You're seeing yourself haloed by your passion, your power, your divine understanding. You see yourself moving forward as, as the air, fueling the flames, okay, making them grow bigger. Now, yes, you have to be mindful that they don't consume you, but you also have to be mindful of the passionate power 
that is guiding you, that you are connecting with, that you want more of, that you see yourself as being a profound part of. And so here, where you have to be mindful of the Queen of Wands, you have at your heart a Queen of Wands that is absolutely aiding you, absolutely connecting with you. And this could be within your own chart, your fire sign energy really shining through wherever it is located. Or this can be another person coming in. But this is also you looking at your passion, your power, your career, your, your choices. And it can be that your job is just a job. I mean, there are plenty of people who have jobs that are just jobs. And we tend to think, oh, my job needs to be my career and my, my truth uh, unto my existence. And it doesn't always have to be that way. It's like sometimes a job pays the bills, right? And then you have a passion on the side. And you have the passion on the side that moves you forward, that ignites you, that lets you be your creative, wonderful self. So however you let this force come through in your life, whether it be at work, whether it be with your hobbies, whether it be, you know, what you desire from life, wherever it is, you're letting it shine because this is your reason for getting out of bed in the morning. And even if you think nobody's going to understand it, even if you think, oh, this is so silly, you need yourself to shine and because it's calling at your heart. You have the king and the queen here a fire. Your heart is blazing. Let it shine in whatever way you can. Let it shine because you've taken up the burdens of the world and you've placed them on your shoulders and you're like, don't worry, I got this. And it's time to say, you know what? You, you learn your lessons. I'm learning mine and I have enough to carry for me. It's not running away from your responsibilities. It's not, it's not, you know, sitting there and saying, everybody fend for yourself. You know, it isn't that either. It is a sense of upholding your end of the deal but also knowing that people have to experience. They have to experience heartbreaks and pains and disappointments and despairs and downfalls. And, you know, because it's part of their story. It's part of their story. And they have to know how they will deal with it. Because they have to know themselves. If they do not know themselves, they will never progress forward, ever. They will be stuck. And you will be stuck because you will be carrying a load that is so heavy. First of all, your heart can't bear it. And that's one of your, your life lessons here is to not carry everybody else's load, not try to heal everybody else. It's like, let them see and then let them heal themselves, which is super hard. But it's also looking at your passion and your power. And it's saying it's time to burn with the barn fire of your creation with what you want and what you desire from life and your passionate truth and your beautiful coming together. It leads you to the moon. In the public arena, you have the devil here, right? And you have the knight of, of cups. So you have yourself fighting with your heart, every addiction, every thing that has held you back. And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, alcohol, drugs, and gambling. It can very well be people-pleasing and swallowing your words and trying so hard to keep the peace that you just forget yourself. And with the moon, with this Pisces energy, time frame February 19th to March 20th, you see yourself stepping out of fear. You see yourself stepping towards what you need, what you desire, and what you want from life. The moon tells us that first of all, all things change. The moon, the moon changes and the moon reflects the light of the day, the light of the sun. But also, we have our fears come up out at night. Why? Because we can't see as well. We can't. You know, we're sight hunters. We are an apex sight hunting predator, all right? But at night, we're severely handicapped because we cannot see. And so we want to light up the night. We want to turn it into another form of day. And the moon is saying, look at the fears. Understand that those fears, they kept your ancestors alive. They did. Being afraid of the dark, you might seem childish, but it's smart. You know, we sit there and we say, oh, little kids are afraid of the dark. Yeah, they're afraid of the dark because, first of all, they're vulnerable, right? Just because they're little children. And they're made doubly vulnerable. Because now they have to deal 
with not being able to see a predator. We are afraid of a dark, the dark because that's when, that's when the animals could come out. That's where the nightmares lie. That could hurt us and scar us and take us away. And so the fear is founded. It is founded in a deep, you know, kind of ancestral part of our mind. But as we look at what we fear, look at why we fear it. Look at what's holding you back. Is it logical fears? Okay, I'm afraid of heights because I can fall. I'm afraid of the dark because, you know, wolves or, you know, tigers and hyenas, right? I'm afraid of because. But am I afraid of success because I may lose me to it? Am I afraid of trying because I might fail? What am I afraid of? What is holding me back? Because you're looking at it in the public arena and then you're finding that you need the shadows. You do. Think of a drawing. If you draw and there are no shadowing, there's no shadowing, right? It's just stick figures or very, you know, blah art. Here you have the shadows coming in. Now it feels real. Now you are embracing it and moving with it. It's adding depth and dimension to your world and to yourself. And because you see the fear, you see what you have, what has held you back, and now what is moving you forward. You see the hangman. You look at things differently, and you will not be looking at things the same. You look at things differently now, and you're going to think, wow, that's a really bad thing. I should look at things like everybody else. Why? Why? They already think that way. Think differently. Destroy the box, you know, Break the box and move forward. The hangman is saying you don't see things like everybody else. And at first you're going to think, that's bad. And you're going to find out that it's one of your greatest strengths. And because you don't see things like everybody else, you're going to have to convince people or feel like you have to convince people to your way of thinking. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they agree or if they don't agree. What matters is that you move forward in your truth. And you're actually going to find that you don't have the time to fight. There are some people where you're sitting there and you're like, I don't have the time, the energy, or the inclination to fight you. I don't want to. I'm using my power, my energy, to push open my world. To birth myself forward to my dreams my wishes, my desires. And that's where you're headed, Gemini. Let's see what your spirit animals have to say for this time. Gemini, September 2020, money and career. Gemini, September 2020, money and career. Gemini, September 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh, four. Okay. I haven't gotten four spirit animal guides in the longest time, so that's really cool. So we start off with the koala spirit. It says spirit has a plan, and spirit does. It's divine timing. It's not our timing. It's spirit's plan. It's, divine. it's the divine plan, not our plan. And you are starting to see it. Trust that spirit has a plan for you. Trust that you are moving forward in that plan. Yeah, spirit has a plan and it brings you to the inner. And it takes your inner strength to believe in it. But it opens you from the shell that you were, you were in before. The lion spirit. Be generous of spirit. Be bold, be gracious, be great. You know, let yourself be larger than life and believe that you are larger than life and be generous with this, this power that spirit brings you. The brown bear spirit. It's time, take time out. It's time to take time out. It's time to kind of look at what your heart wants, what your soul wants, what you desire from life, not what everybody else demands of you. 
What are the seeds that you are planting for yourself? This then moves you to the moth spirit. Surrender now. Surrender to what your heart desires. Surrender to what you need to create and cultivate. Surrender to your truth. Let's see what your subconscious message is. When it comes from the spirit animals, it is the fox spirit. Think on your feet. You're going to see that you get a lot of ideas. A lot of things are coming at you, changing, transforming. Think on your feet. Think and transform with them. You know, embrace them. Don't stay stuck. And you're very malleable. You have this way of expanding the mind and, and yeah, expanding and contrasting. And I just see you molding into things. And so thinking on your feet is going to be something that is very natural for you to do, Gemini. And it's going to be something that you're really embracing during this time. And yet you're going to sit there and again, the questioning comes up and you're going to think, oh, did I make that decision too fast? Should I have looked at all the different avenues? And it's like, no, no, you're doing a great job. Your subconscious person message is the high priest, which is the Hierophant in the Rider Waite Smith deck. A Taurus energy, April 20th to May 20th is the time frame. Stay true to yourself. Know what you desire, know what you want, and stay true to that truth, to that perseverance. And don't let others, don't let others change you. Yeah, and don't choose their voice over your own. Your subconscious chakra message is the earth star chakra located six inches below your feet. The mother, the mother earth. This is you connecting with the eternal nurturer. This is you connecting with your roots. This is you moving forward towards what you desire in life and what you are creating. And as you do so, your subconscious tarot message is the nine of air. Doubts and fears. Facing nightmares. Facing all the demons that have held you back. Subconsciously, you're going to give yourself half a million reasons why you should fail. And spirit is giving you half a million reasons why you should succeed. But one profound one, it is your life and you deserve success. It might not be movie star success, but it will be a success that is, that is suitable for your soul, that is suitable for yourself. It's not one that you sit there and think, oh wow, this stinks. It's one where you sit there and say, I'm contented. And this isn't staying up at night, worrying and fearing and doubting. This is saying there is a plan for me. And I am moving forward in it. And it doesn't have to mean that everybody knows my name for me to be successful. It means that I know my truth. And I am a success. To go deeper into the subconscious message. is the emperor it's so apropos the emperor and aries energy march 21st to april 19th the emperor's power and the emperor i always love seeing the emperor as king david from the old testament and king david he was he's this beautiful bridge between between consciousness okay so on one side of the spectrum, we have Greek gods, right? And Greek gods, they were very much like human beings, except they had, you know, these, they were gods. They had these superhuman powers. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have Christ, who is perfect. So you have imperfection and you have perfection, and it was that shift of consciousness that moved us one to another, all right? But in the middle, you have King David. King David is obtainable. He's not perfect. But he sure as heck tries. He makes mistakes absolutely. All right? And he transforms himself because of them. It's his connection to spirit. It's his connection to his truth that really breaks the boundary for him. And this is where our consciousness as human beings said there is better. And the emperor shows us that there is better. Now, the negative emperor, of course, is like Nero, who played his fiddle as Rome burnt. But we're not talking about the negative emperor. 
subconsciously we're talking about moving past nightmares and doubts and fears and that we're not good enough to know that we are the rulers of our destiny and we are enough in this moment, in this time, even though we strive for more, we are enough and we are transformed because of it. All right, Gemini, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy, a moving forward in our power and claiming our truth. Because even though we are not perfect beings, we are trying our best and we are guided by divinity and by grace to move forward towards the betterment of ourselves and of our world. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and harmony, Gemini.